Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, been a minute since I had a video out just because the scheduling. It's been, it's been, you know, got to get up early for the weekend. Um, right, you guys know I stay up pretty late looking at props, all that good stuff. That's like a full nighttime grind. So, um, yeah. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name's Shook. I make NBA DFS content, prize fix content, all that good stuff. All these videos that get posted on this subreddit right here, I'll have a link to it down below. You can ask me questions leading up to lock about the slate. Pretty much anything you need. You can talk strategy here with other people. Anything. That'll be linked down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right there. All right. So let's take a look at my lineups from... Sorry, guys. My head itched for a second. Let's take a look at my lineups from the last three days. We can go over... Main slate, we'll go over yesterday. Yesterday had a pretty good day. Um, crushed it in a couple days ago. Um, where is main slate? I don't see it. Hello. There it is. Um, but before I do that, um, let me just show you guys what happened. I believe it was yesterday. Just... Insane day yesterday. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, let me just scroll all the way up. Ch -ch 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 -ch. A lot of combos in here daily. This was yesterday. Um, just insane day yesterday. I don't even know what happened. I didn't even cash on main slate, but... We had some absolute nukes. Um, Night Slate was where I nuked. I'll show you guys my lineups in a second. Um, but pretty incredible stuff. It, it was really, really good. Um, $40, 50 $60 and over grand. Um, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. So let's go over my main slate from yesterday. It wasn't a good day, but my core for main slate was Jonathan Isaac, Anthony Davis, Jamal Murray, OG and Anobi. So the core is pretty good there. Let's go over night slate for that day as well. I came close in the main GPP on night slate, um, the 50K to first. Um, so my lineup in the main GPP, my core for night slate for this was Jamal Murray, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Michael Porter Jr. and Yoke. Or OG and Anobi and Michael Porter. I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, it was a really good day here. Played Mitchell Robinson at low ownership. That was really cool. And then this is the a couple days where, where I absolutely just nuked. Um, my core here was Tyler Hero, Bama DeBio, Harrison Barnes, and De'Aaron Fox, I believe was my core for this slate. Um, so it's a really, really good day overall. Um, really good week. Playoffs have just been phenomenal. So, and then oh yeah, tonight we'll go over my lives from tonight. Uh, this is night slate. Ended up making a little bit back. Still going to be losing on the day. Um, but this is my night slate lineups. Um, salvaged a little bit. Broke even on night slate. Main slate. I'm not even going to pull it up. I guess I lost it in the sauce, but. Hopefully you guys had a good night. If you're looking for more in-depth content, prize picks content, all the good stuff, um, I'll have my Discord link down below. All right, yeah, let's go over the slate. So Orlando at Cleveland, and I think there is some pretty good plays here. So I'm expecting same lineup to be Paula Benchero, Franz Wagner, Jalen Suggs, Jonathan Isaac, and um, Gary Harris. So taking a look at the rotation, we do have some data here to go off. They played Gary Harris big minutes. He played 33 minutes. I don't know what they're doing, not playing one of Paolo or Franz on the court at all times. You need to have one of them on the court at all times, in my opinion. So I don't know what they're doing. They're kind of trolling there with the rotation a little bit. But with that being said, we do have a sample size here. Obviously, you're going to see big, big minutes for Paolo Banchero. And one edge, and uh, you guys on Reddit who I was really high on, was Franz Wagner. I told everyone during the regular season, he wasn't playing big minutes. He was only playing 30 minutes a night. But in the playoffs, you're going to get a significant bump in minutes. People aren't going to realize that. You're going to get a guy at low ownership that's going to be a lot better than he was in the regular season that people aren't going to realize. So that you're going to see a big minutes bump for Franz. I was shocked that Gary Harris played a ton, but 33 minutes there. Jalen Suggs, 32 minutes. Wendell Carr Jr. went to the bench, barely played. Jonathan Isaac start. 
So I think we have to start here once again with Jonathan Isaac. I, I think he's one of the best value plays in the slate. Good point for minute guy that's going to play around 30 minutes. Good rebounder, can stuff the stat sheet. I absolutely love Jonathan Isaac for value. Power forward center eligibility, he looks phenomenal to me. I absolutely love him for value. I think there's other good value here. I think Jalen Suggs at 5K is a decent value as well. She'll play over 30 minutes, needs some scoring. When he's hitting his shots, when he's chucking, he does he does have a ceiling. Good defender, can rack up their steals. They're going to need him out there to defend, right? Um, so I think he's a solid value. I like him quite a bit at 5K. I'm really high on Franz Wagner at 6.5K. Once again, if people aren't going to realize that he's going to get a significant minutes bump in the playoffs and go low owned, I'm going to be really high on him once again. If he's chalk, he's still a good play, but not as good. I would be really high, like I said, if he's low owned. But statue stuffer, good rebounder. Him, Paolo, they're two best players. Going to play a ton of minutes, like I said. So I think he's a really solid play. Definitely prefer him to Paolo Pornpadar, but Paolo's in play at 8.1K. I'm not going to touch one of Carl Jr. with a 10-foot pole. And then, yeah, rounding out the rotation, you saw... I don't know if we can get to anyone. I guess one guy I am intrigued by is Cole Anthony. I think you're going to get a game later down the series. Maybe it could be tomorrow. Maybe it's like game two, game three, game four, where they start DMPing. Maybe like a Markel Fultz DMPs, right? And they trim it down to like eight bodies. If that would happen and say you got like 20 minutes from Cole Anthony, he could potentially be a really good value at like 1% ownership. So like if you're an MME guy and you play 150 lineups, maybe you throw a little bit of Cole Anthony. I wouldn't be shocked if they trimmed down the rotation, but it's Orlando. We know what they do. They always troll. But I thought I mentioned that just as a super large field tournament dart, just in case they do trim it down a little bit, at least uh, Mo play 13 minutes, but I don't think it's enough to go there. Let's move on to Cleveland. So Cleveland in the playoffs, we know they play their main guys. Pretty big minutes. I'm still going to say, though, I, I don't really like too much here. I think they're probably my least favorite team to target on this slate. I think overall, my favorite plays are probably going to be the bigs in Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. But like Donovan Mitchell obviously is in play. He has a ceiling. He's their go-to guy. The offense is literally just ran through Donovan Mitchell. It's give him the ball. Get out of the way. Insane ceiling. It's a small slate. He's always going to be firmly, firmly in play. Personally, you know, you have guys priced around him that I'd much rather play. Like, I'd rather play Jamal Murray for cheaper. I'd rather play Brunson for a bit more. I'd rather spend up for all these guys. So I have a tough time personally getting to a Donovan Mitchell at 8.5K. But like, like I said, he'll be low on. Doesn't make him out of play. He's still playable, but just not my favorite. Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, I think are my favorite plays on this Cleveland, t Cleveland team, point per dollar. Evan Mobley, we know both are good point per minute guys. Evan Mobley back to his full complement of minutes. If I had to pick one, I think I prefer Mobley to Jared Allen, but both are okay options at the center position. Darius Garland is priced right for my liking at 6.7K. Um, stat sheet stuffer, it's just fine. Fine as like a filler play, but like if we look again at like people around his price range, I'm sure there's guys that I'd much rather play. I'd rather play Josh Hart for a little bit more. I'd rather play Franz over Darius Garland. Um, I'd rather pay down for MPJ over Darius Garland. So like kind of get the point there. Still in play for me. Um, kind of similar to like Donovan Mitchell, what I was saying. Still in play, more of like a last piece in, but like, yeah, I don't like much here. I think Max Struess is priced right at 5.5k. I mean, he does have a ceiling when he's hitting his shots, like he could break the slate, but yeah, man, don't like much here. Niang got a bunch of run, but not going to go there. Okoro, how many did he play? He played 18 minutes, couldn't pay me to play Okoro. So yeah, definitely my least favorite team to target on the slate. <clears throat> now we get to the Sixers, and I think the price points here do look a bit intriguing for guys like Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, Kelly Oubre. Looking at the rotation for the Sixers last game, we can pull it up. They played Kyle Lowry 38 minutes. Now, I don't think the minutes are guaranteed that he's going to play close to 40 minutes. Again, he played extremely well. I think there's situations where they could kind of ride the hot hand. Nurse has shown to have done that in the past. Like, I wouldn't say that Kyle Lowry is locked in for 40 minutes again. Um, I think Kelly Uber is pretty safe at this point. He's done it back-to-back -back games. Um, and then we know Tobias... Um, has gotten benched at some points. Just careful there. But I would expect over 30 minutes from him. I expect Tyrese Maxey to play the entire game, basically. And I expect Jamal Embiid to play big minutes. And then the only guy viable, in my opinion, off of the bench is Nicholas Batum. That should be um, a heavy bench piece uh, in, the, in this series. So 
With that being said, I think Joel Embiid looks phenomenal. I mean, him, Jokic, the two best men up on the slate. It's not close. If you want raw fantasy points, we're not talking point per dollar. We're talking raw fantasy points. Joel Embiid, Jokic are going to be your two best options up at the top, right? Um, phenomenal score. Going to get you a double-double. Good defender as well. Um, going to play big minutes. Go-to guy. I, I think he looks like a really good play. He's cheap as well. And the price points here kind of intrigued me on some other guys. Now, I think the Knicks did a pretty good job with Joel Embiid. So they're going to need their role players to really step up here. It's so like 7.9K for Tyrese Maxey. I don't mind. Still just a GPP play for me. But with the amount of minutes he's going to be out there, he's going to be relied upon heavily, especially if the Knicks do a decent amount, decent job on um, Joel Embiid as well. <clears throat> so we'll see. Um, I think the Knicks are personally trying to keep... What's, what am I trying to say? Um, testing Joel Embiid's lateral movement with his knee. Put him in like pick and roll and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely have interest in Maxi at 7.9. I think he's intriguing in GPPs just because the amount of minutes he's going to play. He had a really good game last game. I think he's going to have to be relied upon more heavily here as well. So I don't mind him. Like I said, just a GPP play for me. And then I don't... I, I don't mind to buy Saris Calibra. I think both are respectively too cheap at their price points. It's disgusting rosters, but yeah, I think both are solid. Calibra played 40 minutes, 40 minutes, has a ceiling when he's hitting his shots. He's been rebounding the ball really well. He's being aggressive when he's out there. So I don't mind that. And then Tobias Harris, we know, another solid rebounder. Should be a decent scorer. Hasn't shown that of late. Um, should play over 30 minutes. I think he's fine. And then I think Kyle Lowry is a solid value. Um, I think we at least get high 20s to... Anywhere from 29 to could be 39 again. Um, you know, definitely this game, definitely a bit of an outlier, but, you know, very, very safe floor. You can stuff the stat sheet. So if we're going to give him, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood, of like 29 plus minutes, very, very safe value. So I do like Kyle Lowry for value. Batum is playable. I do prefer Kyle Lowry at 4.4K. And I think that's it. Let's move on to the New York Knicks. So take a look at the Knicks rotation. I was shocked. They, they kind of just rode the hot hand here. I mean, how do you not? Miles McBride and Bojan were just absolutely torching the Sixers. Like, I feel like Tom Thibodeau kind of had to. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen again, though. I, I think you're just going to get big minutes for Dante once again. And then I do think Mitchell Robinson's probably going to play. I don't know if he'll play similar minutes, but I do think he's going to be a big part of this rotation. So with that being said, I do think Mitch Rob does stand out as a really solid value. I would expect high teens to anywhere from probably like 20, 20 to 30 minutes again. Um, could they start him here? I guess that's a possibility as well. Um, but yeah, I think Mitch, pretty solid value um, at 4.2K. I, I'm not going to touch Miles McBride, but yeah, I, I guess Bojan is playable about 3.7K. I'm not confident in Miles McBride's minutes. They just played him a ton because he was absolutely scorching hot. He just could not miss. So I will let the slappies play Miles McBride tomorrow. I do think Bojan is at least playable. I think he'll probably play at least high teens. He's a guy that's going to chuck when he's out there, um, has a ceiling when he's hitting his shots. He's cheap at 3.7K. So at least he's playable. I do prefer Mitch Rob though. And then I know OG and Anobi had a really bad game last game. He got in a foul trouble early. I like him quite a bit once again for value. Um, if people are going to avoid him just because of last game, I like him quite a bit as a bounce back kind of. He's just too cheap. I'm expecting big minutes. So I like OG once again here. Hartenstein, they kind of went to a bit more Mitchell Robinson. Doesn't make him out of play, but more of just a tournament only play for me. And then I like Josh Hart quite a bit. Um, they can't stop his rebounding. When Joel Embiid's out there, it actually helps Josh Hart. Power forwards have done very, very well rebounding against the Sixers with Joel Embiid on the court. I'm expecting huge minutes once again here. Over 40 minutes. Very safe floor with the ceiling. So very, very safe. I think he's very solid once again here at 6.9K. And Jalen Brunson, really good spin up at 9.3. Going to play big minutes. Their go-to guy. Going to stuff the stat sheet. He looks great. Really, really like him at 9.3K. All right. Now we get into the probably the uh, finale of the slate in Denver Lakers. I think you're definitely going to want some pieces of this game, in my opinion. And let's take a look at what the Lakers did for this rotation. AD played the entire game. He played 44 minutes. D'Lo played 41. Rui played 30, 31. Reeves played pretty much the entire game, close to 40. Um, Ridley only saw Torian Prince off the bench. So with that being said, I think AD and Braun both look great once again here. Prefer Anthony Davis to LeBron, but I think both are really good options. Both are too cheap. 
Um, it's the playoffs must win game here. I, I think both push for over 40 minutes once again. LeBron's new role with him stuffing the statue has triple double upside. So, like him quite a bit. I think Anthony Davis is a really good spend up. He might be one of the better spend ups on the slate point per dollar. So, I love both the top two guys here for the Lakers. Dilo Reeves are both playable. I do prefer Dilo to Reeves, more last piece in type filler plays for me. I will tell you, I probably prefer D'Lo over the like the Sixers mid-range guys that we did mention. And then Rui at 4.9k, now the price points dropped, I think is a okay value, too decent value. I'm expecting over 30 minutes once again here. And then I don't know if I get to anyone else. I, I guess Prince is playable, kind of similar to like a Bojan Badanovic, but I'd rather just play Bojan, right? And I think that's it. Let's move on to Denver here. So Denver... You saw Jokic play 40, you saw Jamal play 40, Michael Porter Jr. played 40, Aaron Gordon 32, Contavious Caldwell Pope 40, Peyton Watson had a big game in 13 minutes, and you saw a bit of bronze. So, I mean, what are we doing with the price point here? Jamal Murray is the best play on the slate. Him, Jonathan Isaac, two of the best plays in the slate. I absolutely love Jamal Murray. If he is not in your lineup tomorrow, I don't know what you're doing. He looks absolutely phenomenal. He would be the first or second guy in my lineup tomorrow. I absolutely love Jamal Murray. Can you play Jokic with Jamal Murray in your lineup? Absolutely, I think you can. I think Jokic is one of the best spin ups on the slate. I really like him. Go into the mid-range. Michael Porter Jr. is too cheap at 6.2K. He's going to play big minutes. He looks really solid. Aaron Gordon's playable. Another guy that during the regular season wasn't getting the minutes he'll get in the playoffs. you got to factor that in now. KCP is going to play big, big minutes. He stands out as a really good value. If you want to go to like Peyton Watson or Braun and large field GPPs, that's fine. But I'm not going to go there. And I think that's it. So hope you guys had a good night. Glad to have the videos back. And I will talk to you on the next video.